Hi, I'm Janne Kotilahti, working as software engineer at IQM. I'm gonna show you the basics of KQ circuits, our software for designing quantum chips. First, we need to download K-Layout. Go to klayout.de and click Get K-Layout. There you can find builds for most common operating systems. I'm using Windows 10, so I will download the 64-bit Windows executable. We will also assume that you already have Git and Python installed. Run the installer with default settings. Once it has finished, we can try running K-Layout. Now we will get KQ circuits from our repository at github.com slash iqmfinland slash KQ circuits. Let's copy the repository URL. Then open a command line and navigate to the folder where you want to have the local repository. Clone the repository by writing git clone and past the link that was copied. Now let's go to the local repository and set up KQ circuits to work in K-layout. You may have to write Python instead of Py depending on your Python setup. Now KQ circuits is installed, so let's open K-layout again. After installing KQ circuits, you should be able to see these libraries in the libraries section. They contain all the KQ circuits cells. To add a cell to the layout, we simply drag and drop it from the library window and then click OK on the window that is opened. We can center the view by pressing F2. We also need to press display full hierarchy or press the asterisk key to make the cell visible. To change the parameters, double click on the created cell which opens the instance properties window. Let's change for example the number of fingers and click apply to see the changes. We can also change other parameters such as the finger length in the same way. Some elements such as the Copelner waveguides can also be modified in other ways. We can click and drag the guide points to change the endpoints of the waveguide. By double clicking the guide path, we can create new points and then move them to change the shape of the waveguide. We can also add and modify elements using code. This macro creates a qubit and a launcher for a waveguide. We can easily change the piezo parameters such as the qubit arm width. Let's also add a waveguide that goes from the launcher to the qubit and works as a flux line. We can use named reference points of previously created cells to automatically make waveguides between them. And now we have the qubit and launcher connected by a waveguide. By combining multiple elements in code, we can also create chips such as this single XMOS chip containing qubits and readout resonators. The chips are also P cells with modifiable parameters. For fabrication purposes, we can produce photo masks containing many chips. This is done using simple mask scripts, where you define the location of chips in the mask and all the chip parameters. These scripts will also export all required files in a mask folder. containing photo masks of single layers in the mask, as well as files for individual chips for things such as EBL. There is also automatically generated documentation summarizing information about the mask.
Hi there, my name is Alessandro Landra. I am a design engineer in IQM. My daily job is to actually design and simulate the QPU, or the Quantum Processing Unit. What I do is to use the KQ Circuit software package to interface and automate the circuit simulations in Sonnet or ANSYS electronic desktop, such as HFSS and Q3D, allowing an efficient workflow from the design concept to its electromagnetic performances. As an example, we can write a simple geometry where we choose the port location, define the simulation's parameter as cross-parameter sweeps, and convergence criteria in a simulation script. Running this script will open a key layout preview of the geometry. The produced batch file can then be run and the software of choice will perform the modeling, the simulations, the exports of the required results.